today we're going to be um, starting our bobbleheads. So what you want to do is, first of all, you're going to begin with your slab. So you're going to cut off a piece of your clay from your block. Remember, if you cut it straight from your block and you haven't used it before, you do not need to wedge it. But if you have used the clay before, if it's all little pieces and scraps, then you need to wedge your clay. Remember, you use this area of your palm and you push down and forward. So I'm gonna push down and forward. And remember this is the oxbow technique. And it creates that little alien baby. Remember we kind of roll the mouth back under. And you're gonna to wanna to do this about 10 times. Once you've wedged your clay, you wanna throw your slab. And there's a few ways in which you can throw a slab. The first one, is you can take your clay and you're gonna throw it down on the table and toward you. That little pull at the end is what helps make the clay flat. So what you don't wanna do is slam your clay straight down on the table. If you hear a sort of smacking noise, you know that your clay has stuck. See how mine's stuck to the table? And you don't want that to happen. So remember you always want to pull down and towards you. Once you get your clay at this shape um, and kind of a little bit thicker than half an inch, you can run it through the slab roller or you can use a rolling pin. I actually like to use the slab roller so I'm going to run that through there now. All right, so I've run my slab through the slab roller. I'm gonna take my metal rib and I'm just gonna run across it. This just gets any air bubbles that might still be in there. I've kind of got a little one here so I'm just gonna pop that. I kind of like to do both sides, so I'm going to run that through. And I'm going to take my template for my body and I'm going to place it onto the slab. Using my needle tool, I'm going to carefully cut out this sort of pizza shape. This is going to be the body of my bobblehead. You wanna carefully lift this up. If it's stuck to your table, I suggest getting your metal rib and just kind of sliding it under and lifting up the side, you can sort of peel it off. What you're gonna do now is you want to tent it. So I'm going to roll it around so that these joints are almost lined up. So what you're gonna do is you don't want to attach it together just yet. Um, what you need to do is consider that this is plastic and you want it to get leather hard. Because if you try to join it together now, it's gonna put a lot of fingerprints into your clay. And remember, that's one of your objectives, is to ensure that you have a smooth surface of your clay. So you're going to, what I call, tent it. Just put it over to the side and leave it while you create the head for your bobble head. So as you're creating your head, you're leaving this to get leather hard. So I'm just gonna move this out of the way. With my head, I'm going to cut off a block of clay. And for the head, for the bobble head, you want it to be about the size of a baseball. If you have it any bigger, you're gonna have a massive head on your bobble head. So to create the pinch pot for the head, I like to take either a paddle or my hand and tap this into a ball shape. Remember the paddles are just in the tools tub area. And it's gonna be the tub that's labeled paddles. I have a lot of students forget that the tools tub by the slab roller is actually alphabetized, so you just have to look through and find the one labeled paddles. All right, so once I've kind of hit this into a ball shape, if there are any crevices, you wanna smooth those out, because that's gonna really help as you create your pinch pot. If you don't do this, you'll kind of get cracks throughout your pot. Is using your thumb, you're gonna push this into the pinch pot. You don't want to go all the way through. You want to stop about half an inch towards the end. So if you place your hand 
I like to place my left hand on one side and using my dominant hand, my right hand, I'm gonna push through. Now if it's really hard to push your clay at this point, your clay is probably too hard, that you might need to cut off a fresh piece of clay from your block. If it's too hard, then you're gonna need to add water because it's too dry. So I've pushed my thumb through, I'm gonna wiggle it around to open it up. And using two fingers, you can use your um, pointer in your middle or your ring in your middle. I like to use my ring in my middle and I just kind of pull the pot out. Pinching slowly. I don't want to pinch really hard. If I pinched really hard, I'd get a really skinny spot in my pot. I don't want to do that. I'm just going to slowly go around. And the goal is you want your head on your bobblehead to be about a quarter of an inch. You can tell if it's a quarter of an inch because most people's pinky nail, the width is about a quarter of an inch. So I can measure here and I can see I need to go smaller. If you go too thin, then it's kind of hard to work with your clay. Once I get to the point where my walls of my pot are a quarter of an inch, I can feel at the bottom it's still kind of thick. So I place it in my palm of my non-dominant hand and I'm just gonna kind of pull that clay. See how I'm getting these little stripes that are happening? I'm gonna pull that clay up and out. Now you're gonna practice making pinch pot heads. You're gonna create three and you're gonna check off your best one with me. That's the one you're gonna use for your piece. So I've got my head, you can see I've got, I've got these cracks going on. That's okay, I can take a metal rib and I can smooth that out. Or I can use my finger and smooth that out. So those aren't really a big deal, nothing to worry about. If you've got loads of cracks and it's looking like elephant skin, again, your clay is too dry, you need to add water to it. Bag it for 24 hours, 48 hours till you come to class next, and then you'll be able to reuse it. All right. Another trick is if you get a damp sponge, you can run over this as well, but if you use a really wet sponge, you're gonna create slip on the surface, and it's gonna actually end up cracking your pot more because this will dry at a different rate to the rest of the clay, and it will cause cracks to happen. So just a damp sponge. Once you've got the head the way that you want it to be, I kind of want to round mine in just a little bit more. So I'm kind of pulling those edges inward. I suggest using a piece of paper or a bat. And the bats are just boards, which we have plastic on. This is what we call a bat. It's for storing clay. Place your head or your you know pinch pot head on top and you're just gonna use your needle tool to tidy up the lip rim. See how mine is all uneven? So I'm just gonna kind of rotate the head on the bat and I've got a nice even lip rim now. It's sharp though. Once we bisque fire this, this would cut you. So what you need to do again with your damp sponge, you can just kind of come through and smooth this out. So I'm just kind of rotating it around, but I'm supporting the outside edge with my hand. Why am I doing this? I'm doing this so that I don't distort the pot that I've just created. Remember, we want these to kind of take the shape of a head. I'm just lightly moving this around. You can also take the sponge and just sort of tidy up the inside. And you can take the sponge and tidy up the outside as well. Okay. Once you've done this and you've chosen your um, best pot that you're going to keep for your head, you're going to place it onto your bobblehead body. Back to my cone that I've created for my body and I'm going to need to slip and score this together. Make sure that it's leather hard. If I can move it really easily, this is still plastic. If I can't move it that easily, then it's leather hard. But if I can move it like this, it's still plastic and you want to wait another 10 minutes. You can also take a hair dryer and you could dry it so that it can get uh, leather hard faster. So something you just need to know about this room. 
when they remodeled it, uh, if you use more than two hair dryers on the back wall, it'll blow a fuse. So don't use more than two hair dryers on the back wall at a time. Um, all right, so just gonna use a hair dryer, and you don't want to place the hair dryer super close. It will scorch your clay, and that area will crack. You just want to sort of rotate it around. So that, again, that's why I like to use a bat because as you can see, it's kind of hard to rotate on the table. But if I have a bat, I can just kind of move this more easily. Alright, so the trick is you want to dry the clay so that it's even. Um, if you dry it too fast in one spot, it will crack. But now mine is leather hard. See, as I, um, I can't really bend it like I did before. So I'm going to carefully rotate this around. And if you dry it too much, what's going to happen? As you push it around, you're going to get cracks all through the side. So kind of test it out as you go. I need to slip and score these pieces together. So remember, I can just score by making marks in two different directions or kind of little crosses across your piece. So I've scored both sides. What I need to do is use some slip. Remember you want your slip to be about the consistency of chocolate milk. So if you get the slip from by the sink and it's too thick, go ahead and add water to it. You don't need to ask me. You can just go ahead and add water. If it's too thin, you can just get little scraps of clay that you have on your table and just sort of plop them in there. And overnight it will dissolve and create really nice slip for the next day. So just be proactive with your slip. Make sure it's the right consistency. Too often students use really, really thick slip. And the problem with that is if you don't have slip that can go into all these cracks, what are you creating? You're making air pockets. If you don't actually fill these holes that you've just made, and then think about those 10 golden rules of ceramics that we covered in those first few days. If you have air in your clay, what's gonna happen to it when it fires? It's gonna explode. All right, so I place that slip on there, and I'm carefully pushing this joint together. So if I push it this way, I'm carefully pushing this joint together. And I'm pushing my thumbs towards each other as I go. And I just run over this. What you need to do as I support the inside is you kind of got to push that together. Now see how weak this joint is? We need to add a reinforcing coil. So to add a reinforcing coil, you want to take your clay. Remember, if it needs to be wedged, you've got to do that first. And you want to create a kind of snake-like coil. So I'm going to squeeze so I can get the coil started. And this is where you kind of want to move everything out of the way. To create a nice, even coil, you need a long motion to roll. And you want this coil to be about the thickness of a pencil. We don't want this really thick, otherwise that's a lot we've got to blend in. So when it's about the thickness of a pencil, hold it up to your cone, and then just kind of tear off the ends. So go ahead and score your coil. What's going to happen if we don't slip and score this? Okay, so once you have slipped and scored your coil, you just want to score over the joint. And it's going to kind of be a little bit soupy, right? Because you've already had water to here. So you really don't want to add a lot of slip to this. Just kind of fill in those cracks that you've made. and do the same thing along the coil. And you're gonna place that over the joint. Now if I just try to push it here without supporting the back, what's gonna happen? If I just push down, it's gonna break this all apart. So what you wanna do is supporting the inside, you just carefully push it down. And this is where some students can get a little bit too rigorous to begin with where they just kind of push right away. See how I'm going slow? I'm just sort of pushing 
as I go. Now think about it, if you had a really thick coil at this point, think about how much you'd have to smooth out. So after a while, I just like to run my finger across it. And you can take your metal rib and you can just start smoothing that down. Again, if your cone is not leather hard, if you just thought, oh, hey, whatever, I'm just gonna get this done, and you don't um, wait for it to get leather hard and you just keep it plastic, as you're putting this on, your whole project, your whole cone is just gonna kinda get smushed. And it's gonna look like junk. So just take the few minutes to either hair dry it or let it get leather hard. I've had some students in the past do something kind of cool where they make their cone and then when they put it away in their Ziploc bag, they just leave some air in the bag and zip it up. And by the time they come to class next time, it's perfect, ready to use. Now this is actually kind of thick down here. So I'm just gonna take my needle tool and just kind of trim that off because I don't want to spend the time having to smooth all of that stuff out. So again, if you have a really thick coil, this stage is gonna take you a really long time. The thinner the coil, the better. You could go even a little thinner than a pencil. All right, see how that's nice and smooth? Where we can barely even tell that that joint even existed. You're going to place your head on top of your body, and you want to just sort of push the head into the cone. So you make a sort of divot. If you don't make this divot, your head won't really balance. You don't want to push too hard because you don't want the cone coming through the head. And as you push it might kind of create some little cracks at the top, but that's okay. See how now this is able to stay on the cone itself. So you're just going to attach that and now you're ready to start adding your decorations. 